Good evening, guys, and welcome back to Basic Fundamentals for the MiG-29, and Happy New Year. This will definitely be the last video. Got this one just in time um, before the, the end of 2018, so start out by saying hope 2018 was pleasant for all of you all. All of you all. That's a good one. And I hope 2019 brings even better joy and success to you all. I wish you guys all the very best, and I appreciate the continued support in the channel. With all the mushy crap set aside, let's go ahead and get after what we're all here for. Today we'll be talking about vertical scan mode, bore sight, longitudinal aiming mode, the EO system, electronic optical system, as well as the uh, joint helmet mounted queuing system. Okay. Or Jehikmus. Okay. So, getting right after it, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and throw our autopilot on. And we're going to talk about the EEO system. The EEO system can be activated by pressing Oscar on your keyboard or the letter O. Okay. And then we can go into, for example, vertical scan mode by hitting number three on our keyboard. Now, whether you hit O or not, as soon as you go into vertical scan mode, you automatically enter EO mode. Same thing with bore sight in the longitudinal aiming mode. Now, the first thing that I want to make very, very critical with the EO mode, it is a passive system, meaning that it does not... Um, retrieve any information back, okay? Now, why is this important? Well, I'm gonna show you guys here in just a minute. The first thing that we're gonna do is talk about vertical scan mode while we're here. So, before I go showing you guys anything about EO, vertical scan mode is any target that go, falls between these two vertical uprights here. Um, all you have to do is simply press your enter key and you will lock the target up. Now, the scanning range actually goes from approximately 10 degrees beneath the HUD up to approximately 70 degrees, 70 degrees through the top of the canopy. Okay, so if you have a bandit up in this region and you're in vertical scan mode, you get him between the two uprights, you can still lock him up by using vertical scan. Okay, he doesn't have to be between this confined area of the HUD. All right, so that's the first step. The other thing is um, you want to make sure that you're within approximately 10 nautical miles of the target um, or approximately five to eight kilometers, okay, based on your range. Um, Anything outside of that and uh, you may not be able to track it. Okay, you may be too far out If you find yourself that you know, there's a bandit there, but you're just not able to lock them up. Chances are it's probably a distance issue All right now Locking up a target is very simple. Like I said once they become come between these two uprights It's just a matter of tapping the enter key now. Here's where we're gonna get into the second part of this I'm gonna lock my target up. I'm gonna hit enter and let's take a peek here for a minute. I'm going to hit pause. You can see that we're still in EO. We can see that our distance indicator is coming down. We can see our RTR line. Remember, this is the uh, highest probable uh, point of impact by letting the target come through this bar here. We'll get the launch authorization. We can see that the R73 is currently selected, and we also have our minimum fire range. And for those of you who don't know, the R73 is a uh, short-range heat-seeking missile, Okay, much like the uh, uh, counterpart for the AIM-9. All right, now, oh, sorry, I had to adjust my chair there a minute. <clears throat> and apparently I had to cough. Okay, now the thing that I wanna show you guys that's most important is right here. You can see that the A indicates uh, hostile, right? Because that's what I said in the last tutorial. And I also told you guys that the fact that it will switch between A and AFR, AFR identifying a friendly, would be very handy in vertical scan, bore sight, you know, the close air combat maneuvering or the target acquisition modes, right? Um, there is one major caveat that I left out. Um, we are currently on the red side. I currently have a red MiG-29 locked up and the indication here is telling me that I have a hostile or a bandit locked up. That is false. I have a friendly locked up right now. The reason why I'm getting the A is because the radar is not active. The caveat that I left out in the last tutorial was that in order for it to give you the correct information when in vertical scan, bore sight mode, any of the modes that use the electronic optic system, your radar must be active in order to receive the IFF. If your radar is not active, you're just going to get the A. And if we turn our labels off, I have no way of knowing that I've just locked up a friendly and that I'm about to engage him. The biggest reason why I wanted to point this out, and I know that one of our reviewers also pointed this out in my last video, he actually caught it about moments after I did. After I always watch my videos after I post them just to make sure that there isn't any issue with the upload that I have to adjust. So um, I'm not like, not like one of those, you know, narcissist people who is just so proud of the sound of my own voice that I can't see straight. Okay, so I was reviewing it, and I caught that I said it as well. Then I saw um, Black Pixel's comment um, where he also indicated basically the information that I just told you guys. Um, 
Now I knew I was going to be going over it again when we went into this tutorial, but for any of those who, of you who have been out using this information and pulling their hair out, not understanding why you're shooting down friendlies, my bad if that happened to take place. So one last time, EO does not give you IFF information. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to unpause again, and all I'm going to do is tap my radar. So I'm going to hit I on my keyboard, and there we go. You can see that I have the AFR once again. So now I've identified as a friendly uh, target source here. Now there's one other thing that you can see that doesn't happen here unless you unlock your target. So I turned my radar on, I got my uh, IFF, but I have no indication that the radar is actually active. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock my target. And now you can see that we have EORL, okay? The RL indicates that the radar is active. All right, so when we come now that we're back into vertical scan mode, you can see the EORL. Um, has come up. The EORL indicates that we are um, using the radar as well as the electronic optical system. So when we lock our target up now, okay, you can see again the EORL remains indicating the radar is active. Now a little caveat that I've noticed here that's kind of a bug is when I locked the target up the first time in the EO, okay, and then turned my radar on, obviously because I had a target locked, I didn't get the EORL, it didn't change. But then when I unlocked the target and tried to lock him back up, it wouldn't let me. I actually had to go out of vertical scan mode, back into vertical scan mode, and then it locked it up and left the correct information on the HUD. So that may be a little bit of a bug that we need to look at, but uh, nothing too crazy that we can't work around. So if you guys see that, you know, don't sweat it too much. The biggest thing to know is, is your radar on? And you, there's a couple of different ways to verify that. So again, if you unlock your target, you'll see the EORL. Another thing you can do is switch into, for example, a vertical scan or a vertical scan beyond visual range. Remember, if all this indication is working, the ILLV and the RL indicate the radar is active, the RL being the key one, just like we see. And then we go into vertical scan mode again, we get our EORL again and lock up our target and we're getting our IFF. Okay, now what you would typically do here is we would turn our radar off Okay, we go back into AO. Now we can see our EO. We can see that we have the uh, launch authorization. We obviously don't want to shoot. We know it's a friendly. So we've identified him as a friendly. So now what we're going to do is unlock him, come over to this guy. Well, what are you? We're going to lock him up and we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So we've got our radar on, but like I said, it's a little bit of a bug. So I'm going to switch out of that. There we go. Now we see the EORL. We're in bore sight. Go back into vertical scan, lock my target back up. And there we go. Now we have the correct indication on our HUD. We know he's a target, we have launch authorization, let it loose. So we can FOX2 on our target without any concerns. Splash. Okay, so now that we've gone over the big critical uh, elephant in the room of IFF and the MiG-29 using your close air combat scan ranges, okay, um, or scan uh, options, Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So the next one we're going to do is hit number four on our keyboard, and that's going to put us into bore sight. And it works exactly like vertical scan mode in the aspect that all we're going to do is put our target into this circle. So we're going to come in on this F-15. He's in our circle. We're going to lock him. We have our launch authorization, and we're going to let it loose. And splash again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the radar off. Okay, now in this mode, it seems to work just fine. You can see that switch over to EO without any problems. So we're gonna go back into, uh, we're back into um, bore sight, come in on this guy here, lock our target, launch authorization, FOX2 again. Easy peasy. And the next one I'm gonna show you guys is a real quick one. It's longitudinal aiming mode. So we're gonna hit number six on our keyboard here. And all we're going to do is, it's literally true bore sight. I need to pull this guy off a little bit here. Let me slow down. I got cooking just a little bit here. Trim our nose down a bit. Here's our boy. And just listen for the tone. There we go. But it's real sensitive. So it's a true bore sight. It's literally using the um, the seeker's cueing in its locked position. So as soon as you hear that tone, let your missile go. And you're off. Now the advantage to every single employment that we just used here is that the enemy never got any radar indication with the radar off. Okay. So here's the toss-up. 
pause for a second here and talk about this for a minute. When using just the EO system, your um, opponent will never know you're there unless you're already in an emergent engagement. So if you come up behind a guy and you've got your EO, you launch on him, he's never going to see it coming. He's, not, he's never going to get an alert. The disadvantage, remember, is that you may shoot down a friendly if you don't turn that radar on and identify him. With the EO IFF identification, so we turn, we lock our target, we tap our radar on, find out if he's friend or foe. For that brief moment, there's nothing you can do about it. His RWR is going to spike. He's going to get an alert that something just pegged him. Okay, but when you tap it off real quick, what he's not going to get is a range indication. He's not going to know where the, he's going to know the direction the radar source came from, but he's not going to know what your position to him is. He's not going to know that you're right behind him. So that's the other thing that you got to think about. It's really not that critical if you just turn it off on and off real quick. So you come up behind somebody, tap your eye or your radar on real quick, make sure he's a hostile, kick your radar back off, let your missile loose. Okay. Um, and then if you're in a merge engagement with multiple bandits, you know, they already know you're there. You, you can either a leave your radar on or keep cycling back and forth. Again, it all depends on, on your, what your surroundings are. Are you the only friendly out there? If you have a buddy who's in the engagement with you, you got to make sure you leave that, uh, that radar on unless you are really in close and you can visually acquire your target and identify it. Okay. So there's a bunch of toss ups when using that, that you have to be careful of. Yes. Every time you turn your radar on, you are alerting the area to your presence. Okay. Everybody knows that you're there. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's benefits to both, but I can tell you again, in multiplayer servers, you're going to catch a lot of crap. If you shoot friendlies down in a lot of servers now, whether it's an accident or not, they'll boot you the second you do it. So use your IFF guys. And the last one here that I'm going to show you guys is the, um, electronic queuing system, the joint head, joint helmet mounted queuing system. Okay. And all we're going to do here is let me get the correct control button because I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't want to tell you guys incorrect. Launch toodle. It is five. Okay, I was correct. All right. So we're going to hit five on our keyboard. And now we have our queuing system. All right. Now all the X indicates is that from this point, the seekers on whatever missile weapon you have selected can't see the target. Okay. But what you do is the same principle. We're going to just look over at them, put them in that circle. Boom. Targets locked. We got the LA. Yes, I know he's a friendly, but we're going to let it loose. Missiles away. And we're just going to keep maneuvering. Okay. And then we can start looking for our next target and engaging. Okay. Boom. And he's out of there. So real short and simple when you think about it, there really isn't a whole lot to it as long as you understand what you're doing. Okay. And these can be used with a plethora of targets. Um, the... R27ET is an infrared um, homing extended range missile. That with these queuing systems, especially the uh, helmet mounted queuing system that we see here on the screen are super handy. Okay. And reason being is, and we'll go over the missiles here in the next one very briefly. Um, actually what the hell, let's just talk about it real quick right now. We'll go ahead and add it here. So I'm going to go ahead and let's get the queuing system out. Uh, there we go. And actually we'll go back into navigation mode. Let's throw autopilot on for a second. I don't feel like flying her. Okay. So talking about missiles for a second here, um, there are three variants, primary variants of missiles that use. There are four that are you that are within DCS, but only three that you really want to be using. So I'm going to talk with the least used and the least desirable. First is the R60. The R60 is a short range infrared missile. Okay. So it's a heat seeker, but it's extremely outdated. Okay. It's a very old missile and it's very, very short range. Okay. Then we have the R27 ER, the R27 E. Okay. Or excuse me, R is a semi-active, uh, range a uh, radar missile. Okay. So it's the counterpart to the aim seven sparrow. Okay. R 27 R is semi-active radar. Okay. R 27 T is infrared. Okay. So when you look at those two missiles, think R for radar T for, I don't know, tail for engines. You know what I mean? T is the heat seeker. Okay. Then you also have the R 27 ER and all R 27 ET. All that is, is an extended range missile. Okay. So R 27 ER is still a semi-active radar missile, but it's extended range. 
R27ET is still a heat-seeking missile. It's an infrared homing, but it's extended range. Then you have the R73, with, which is the uh, infrared short-range missile. Okay, so it's slightly shorter range, I believe, than the R27. Um, but from the research I could gather, it looks like it's slightly more maneuverable. Um, but very comparable missiles, on, honestly, in the long range. Or in the long run, I should say. And then we finally have the big dog, the R-77, which is the active radar homing missile. So the counterpart to the AMRAAM, the AM-120C, and uh, Bravo. All right, so real quick, R-27Rs, radar, semi-active radar. You must maintain lock on the aircraft until the missile reaches the target. R-27T, infrared, homing. Throw the E in front of those, and it just means it's a longer range missile. Okay, so the R27ET is an exceptionally handy missile when used with the um, uh, mounted uh, queuing system, the helmet system. Okay, uh, you can fire on your bandits from pretty far away and they never see it coming. They'll never get an alert because it's a uh, heat seeking missile. Okay, um, now that's not true with all aircraft. There's caveats in there. For example, the A10 has an option, um, a pod in it that can detect um, heat seeking uh, infrared devices, but. We won't get into that. I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay. And then um, R-73, another heat seeker, short range. And then the R-77, the counterpart to the AMRAAM, the active radar homing missile. Okay. So I hope that covers up a lot of the issues with the missiles. I hope you guys get a better understanding with the vertical scan mode, the bore sight, and the uh, uh, helmet mounted system. Okay. If you guys have any questions or comments, please, as usual, leave them in the field below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, everyone, have a wonderful and safe New Year's. I know we all tend to get a little crazy on New Year's Eve. Please be careful, guys. Um, it's not worth the risk. No drinking and driving. hate to sound like a dad, but really dumb choice. I've made it myself. So um, be safe, guys. If nothing else, be safe, be safe, be safe. Until next time, this is Overkill. Catch you guys later.